Good evening. Tonight I want to talk to you about uh, authenticating a German Iron Cross First Class. There's a uh, the First Class Iron Cross is a German metal that came out in uh, in the 40s. You can see when we look at this, you can see some rust at the top. You can see some rust at the bottom. I need to put some gun oil on it. Of course, you can see the year 1939 and the German swastika. Some people don't like to be around German crosses or other memorabilia. They can get bad vibes from it. But uh, other people, like myself, I like to collect history and uh, memorabilia. So I've made this video, so if you're out and you're shopping at a flea market or you go to a pawn shop or something and you see you're an iron cross and you have a a desire to to purchase one and you want to you know have some uh, idea of what you're looking for then that's what this video is for okay so how are some of the ways we can authenticate this cross well for one thing it's probably going to have some rust on it like you see on this one when you examine the cross, you want to look up in these edges right here, all the way across, all the way around, and you want to look for black paint that might be splattered up in here. The German Iron Cross was made out of three pieces. It was stamped together. A lot of the fakes are one piece. They'll put it together and then they'll paint the center. And when they paint the center, they inevitably get black paint on these edges it comes up another way to uh, to look at an iron cross if you pick one up it's made of iron it's got German silver and if you grab a hold of one you can't bend it so you'll know just by the rigid the rigidity and the um, how solid it is that that's another sign. Now when I say they stamp it together, they make the back, the front frame, and then they make the center, which is made of iron. So when they put them together, what you'll be able to notice, I'm going to hold it up here for you and see if I can get a shot on it. If you look, it's layered so it's always good to have a loop if you look you can see the edge it's two pieces put together over the iron you can probably see it right there on the corner so if you take a loop and I would always recommend having one then you'll be able to see that fine seam and that's going to let you know that it was stamped appropriately. You might can see it right in here. Right there you can see where it came together. And if you look down it, then you'll, you'll be able to tell that it was pieced together. If you don't see that seam, and you don't see three different parts, somebody's after your money right and it's easier to keep your money than it is to get it back because uh, thieves out there they want your money as, as much as you do so if you're buying collectibles you know keep an eye out learn up on it study and so you'll know what you're doing now most of the iron crosses the common iron cross it depends on what literature you read one of the most common like I said depending on the literature is the screw back the screw back just simply means that the back of it screwed off and then this was put through the soldiers the Iron Cross first class was wore on the left breast another thing if you if you find a screw back let me throw this in here real quick you want to make sure that that pin right here is on there because a lot of them are missing it and of course if you're a collector you want it you 
in as pristine possible condition as you can get it. That makes a big difference. If that pins off, it's going to knock down the value, it's going to decrease your paying price or the cost, and uh, it's not going to be as collectible. Most uh, iron crosses are going to be marked. This one right here is L21. You can see it on here. Now the screw back itself is made of sterling silver. So you can do a magnet test on it. I wouldn't you know, recommend scraping it and putting any acid on it. But you can see on here that's L21. That's the maker. Another way to authenticate this cross is the measurements. Don't worry about Lester back there. He's just hanging out and watching. So when you measure an iron cross, there was very few of them that were shorter than 44 millimeters. But an iron cross is going to be 44 millimeters. And you can see right there that it hits it. And if we flip the cross, you'll see once again that it's 44 millimeters so it's symmetrical it's going to be 44 by 44 so let's do a little rehashing on this so looking for an iron cross it's going to be 44 millimeters by 44 millimeters it's going to be put together in three pieces you'll be able to see it because when they put them together they might hit it with a little solder but other than that it's going to be hard to bend. You can't bend this thing. I mean, you probably could, but you're not going to bend it just my, you know, with your hands uh, without a pair of pliers or something like that. You'll normally see some rust because the core is iron. You can see rust in this one. And you want to make sure another visual is going to be make sure there's no paint up in these corners or in these areas right in here up on the silver, the German silver. The iron cross should be stamped together so this is a baked on black and when they put this top on it this outer rim then it's going to sit on it and you shouldn't have paint on, in any other area. Thank you for watching. We'll have more and uh, we're mainly doing collectibles so Y'all have a good one.